When it comes to Pizza Tower, I've ranked every normal level, every title card, and I've reviewed the content from the Halloween update. But one thing I've never really discussed in any capacity are this game's bosses, and I think it's high time I fixed that. So today I'm going to be ranking all 5 Pizza Tower bosses from my least favorite all the way up to my favorite. But as always, I need to make a few quick disclaimers before we can begin. Firstly, this is just my own opinion. I quite enjoyed every single fight in this game, so please don't take it personally if your own favorite boss ended up lower on the list. You're always free to express your own opinion down below in the comments section so long as you keep things civil. And my other disclaimer is the obligatory spoiler warning. I highly recommend actually playing through Pizza Tower before watching this video if you're able to. With all that out of the way, it's time to finally start ranking the bosses, so grab yourself a slice and sit back because it's pizza time! Are you Neville Paperman? Yup, everyone's favorite egotistical artist is the one I ultimately decided to place in dead last. Like I said before, I did enjoy this fight, and if this were a ranking of all the bosses based solely on the characters themselves and not the actual fights, Pepperman would place a lot higher. But here he's getting dead last for the exact same reason that John Gutter placed so low in the ranking of the levels. It's an introductory stage! Boss battles operate a bit differently than the normal platforming stages in Pizza Tower, with the most notable difference being the life system on the top of the screen. Because the game wants to give you a chance to get used to this new format of level, Pepperman's moves are extremely predictable. He'll charge straight at you, turn around a few times, ground pound, and not a lot more besides that. I will say that his attack pattern where he slams down before jumping and rolling off a wall definitely threw me for a loop on my first playthrough, but it becomes super easy to deal with once you learn the uppercut. Watch out for phase 2 of the boss though, because if you're not careful then you'll definitely get nailed by a flying piece of art or two, especially if you're too busy jamming to Pepperman strikes like I am. If I'm being totally honest, this guy killed me way more times on my first playthrough than any other boss, and it wasn't even close, just because I didn't have a very good understanding of the game mechanics at that point. He was also my first P-Rank, and I'd even go as far as to say Pepperman is probably the easiest P-Rank of any stage in the game. But yeah, as much as I was looking for an excuse to put anyone besides the not Apple here in last, there's just no getting around the fact that he's vastly less intricate than any other foe in the game. Sorry, Pepperman. Maybe I'll commission a drawing from you as an apology. What a delightfully unsettling tussle this one is. Going into the fake Pepino fight, I actually had the name of the boss spoiled for me, so I assumed that I was going to be fighting some sort of robot doppelganger Pepino that tied into the Peppa bots from earlier in World 4. But no, instead we've got this really creepy gelatinous copy of the Pizza Man. Everything about this fight is familiar, but also just a smidge off. And this is reflected in fake Pepino's appearance, mannerisms, theme song, and of course his attacks. Prepare to have moves like the grab dash, mock run, and super jump that you've mastered over the course of the game thrown right back at you in the weirdest ways possible. To make things even stranger, once you land a hit on Fake Pepino, he'll stay hidden for a bit and instead send a bunch of clones to spam his moves at you. That's right, you're fighting clones of a clone of yourself. And then later on in War, you find even more of these guys, except they seem to resemble the original Pepino a bit more closely, so they might actually be the result of a more highly developed version of the same cloning process that made Fake Pepino. But I digress. Getting back to the boss, as you enter the second phase, the chaos is ramped up even higher, as Fake Pepino will start acting independently of the other clones, so you have to watch out for a few different attack patterns at once. It's not uncommon for fights in this game to descend into complete insanity by the second act, but few are more unhinged than this one. And then perhaps the cherry on top is the escape sequence at the end where you have to run from a nightmare fuel version of your double, and your only victory comes from being able to escape him rather than defeat him. There really is nothing else in this game that feels so thrillingly unpleasant as this boss. So what's he doing all the way down at number 4? Well, to be perfectly honest, Fake Pepino is probably my least favorite character of the main cast. Not that I dislike him, because I don't. He just hasn't won me over quite as much as the others have. 
I attribute at least part of this to the fact that the game goes out of its way to hide his existence from the player until they actually reach his fight in the final quarter of the game, whereas the other bosses will pop in and out from time to time so they get more opportunities to show off a bit more of their personalities. I'm sorry to all the fake Pepino fans out there, but we all know this game just has way too many banger characters in it, and so decisions like this are always accompanied by a heavy heart. Pizza Time Never Ends is also probably my least favorite boss theme, and I say that as someone who quite enjoys the song. It fits the fight absolutely perfectly, but it loses a good deal of its charm on a standalone listen. Two more minor gripes I have are that the first phase can kind of drag a bit when you're waiting for the swarms of clones to finish spamming their attacks, and I do wish the final quarter chase sequence was just a smidge more difficult. But make no mistake, I'll always think highly of this curious creature and the fight against him. And the release date is... After 500 years! So let's talk about Theodore Noise. This little gremlin is among my favorite characters in the entire game. I really love how chaotic and silly he is. His rivalry with Peppino prompts him to use all kinds of wacky gizmos to try and get one over on him, all while his filming crew diligently records the whole thing. There's just no telling what the noise is going to do next, and I think that's a pretty big part of why this fight was so enjoyable for me. Once you get to his second phase, he starts adding new twists onto his moves. For example, instead of just bouncing around on a pogo stick, he'll break out a giant crusher at the end of the sequence to squash Pepino flat. Or instead of just sitting in a balloon and throwing bombs down from above, Noise will create a balloon dummy of himself at the end to try and trick the player into going in for a hit. This segues into what is perhaps my favorite aspect of this fight, which is how Noise will try and get a rise out of Peppino by doing a funny little taunt between his attacks. And then just when you think this is the perfect chance to get in close and land a grab, BOOM! Turns out you were too slow cause Noise nailed you with his signature spin attack. And just when you think you've won and it's finally over, Noise busts out a minigun and gets ready to let loose on Peppino. But then his girlfriend Noisette comes in and drags him off for the final hit, which is a nice subversion of the short little extra bits you have to do at the end of the other fights, like chasing down the tiny Pepperman. It's really interesting to me how this fight is obviously designed to be frustrating and annoying, and yet that doesn't stop it from being really enjoyable. And of course, I'd be stupid to not mention Pumpin' Hot Stuff, which sits comfortably in my top 10 favorite Pizza Tower songs of all time. This energetic and intense theme perfectly suits the white-hot hatred Peppino and Noise have for each other. I really can't wait until the Noise update comes out because then I can finally play as this silly specimen in the main game, and who knows what kind of crazy antics that will lead to. But yes, the Noise is an exceptionally good boss in Pizza Tower, and there was just no whack I was going to put him any lower. One of my all-time favorite transformations in Pizza Tower has to be the Revolver. So let's talk about how much fun it is in the Pizza Head fight. But maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves, because there's a lot to unpack when it comes to Pizza Tower's final boss. First we have the phase with Pizza Face, where he hovers above and drops enemies you can throw back at him in order to give you a chance to attack likely drawing inspiration from Super Mario World's final boss. So long as you don't let the screen get covered in enemies, it's not very difficult. This phase is pretty run of the mill for a 2D platformer boss, and I think that was intentional. Up until this point, Pizza Face has been the end all be all that Peppino is trying to defeat. So this initial first bout serves as a pretty effective anti-climax. But then once Pizza Face is defeated, out pops Pizza Head who tosses you a revolver so you can pump some lead into the true mastermind behind all the misery Peppino has been put through. But make no mistake, Pizza Head has absolutely no intentions of taking this fight seriously. He'll utilize Toon Force to toss the HUD TV at you, spray an Uzi at anything that moves, and play catch using a stupid rat. But one of his more elaborate attacks that I find really creative and funny is when he tries to remove the sword and the stone from Peppino's night transformation but he's deemed unworthy, so instead he just pulls up a huge portion of Pizza Escape and launches a ton of Fork Knights at you in the process. An ailing Pizza Face will also spit cogs down on you from time to time just to make things even more hectic. 
This is the final boss you came for, and it carries all the silliness and unpredictability you've come to love from this game. It's also far and away my favorite of the three phases of the final boss for that very reason. Although the fact that you're in revolver mode definitely helps as well. But we'll talk a bit more about that transformation in a bit. Unexpectancy Part 2 is equal parts silly, intense, and haunting. And that's why it's another one of my top 10 favorite songs in the game. It samples a song named, After You Get What You Want, You Don't Want It. Which is perfect foreshadowing of what awaits Pizza Head after he finally succeeds at breaking Pepino. Speaking of which, the third and final phase of the boss kicks off with Pizza Head assembling all four of the previous bosses to gang up on Pepino. But it turns out that this was a huge mistake. As all five of them laugh at him, Pepino finally succumbs to his rage and scares everyone else off before blitzing Pepperman and knocking out four of his health markers at once. Starting a boss rush where all of your opponents are much easier to defeat thanks to the Pizza Man's heightened anger. Let's give Pepperman some credit though. Technically, he did take five hits from an enraged Pepino, while most of the others only managed four. That's pretty impressive for the World 1 boss. Gustavo will sometimes pop in to lend a hand by stunning the bosses when launched at them as a projectile. This entire sequence is backed by Unexpectancy Part 3, which brings Pepino's unbridled frustration to life in the best way possible. You'll also take a little stroll down memory lane as you hear familiar melodies from stages like Pizza Escape, Freezer Raider, and Waste Yard. Forget Top 10, this song is Top 5 in the game for me and very comfortably so. Once you beat the other four bosses, Pizza Head rejoins the fray, this time with a new attack pattern which is better suited for close range. After Mr. Spaghetti makes an absolute joke out of him, he then proceeds to pile drive Pizza Head into the pizza tower, bringing a tremendous final boss to a close. All in all, the entirety of the climactic final showdown with Pizza Head stands tall as one of the best stages in the entire game for me. Even if I do wish the second phase where you shoot at Pizza Head went on for just a little bit longer. If only there were a fight that exclusively used the revolver transformation, I would crown that as the best boss in the game in a heartbeat. Hey, wait a minute. If this were the Wild West, the hero would say, it's high noon. Now get off the ground and draw your piece. I'm sorry, but the cheese slime Lone Ranger takes this one for me hands down. The fight begins by the vigilante being honorable and tossing you a pistol so you're properly armed for the encounter. This is likely a reference to Kirby's Adventure and many later games in the series where the boss Meta Knight will hand Kirby a sword for their duel and won't initiate the fight until he picks it up. Similarly, Vigilante will just look at the player with a really funny annoyed expression until they grab the revolver. It's as if he's saying, you're not half as funny as you think you are. Once you grab the weapon, the showdown can begin, and it might take some getting used to, but man, is that revolver an absolute blast to use. Pun not intended. You can spam shots if you want, or hold the button down to charge up a giant bullet. It adds a nice extra layer of strategy to the battle. And a heated battle it is, because the vigilante will stop at absolutely nothing until you're defeated. He's got a wide arsenal of weapons at his disposal, like his pistol, Uzi, dynamite, bazooka, flamethrower, boots, and you have to be extra careful once the cows come home. On top of that, you have to keep an eye out for cardboard cutouts that can block your shots, and even the ghost of Vigilante's grandfather, John E. Cheese. A big part of what makes this fight so enjoyable is that for every hat you knock off of Vig's health, he'll string together his moves in a completely different way that forces you to adapt. It's not overly simple like Pepperman or random like Noise. The difficulty throughout this showdown progresses incredibly naturally, while the overall chaos makes it a blast to revisit even months after you've initially beaten it. However, the moment it finally clicked for me just how special this fight was didn't come until halfway through, when Pepino prepares to land a critical shot on Vigilante and the foreground goes completely black for the remainder of the duel. This was the perfect way to bring back the silhouette gimmick from Blood Sauce, because not only do the shadows at sunset complement the western atmosphere, 
but it also challenges the player to identify all of Vidge's attacks that they just learned by their shapes alone. It's just mwah, perfect game design. On top of all of that, this fight feels the perfect length. It's a nice and long brawl, but it never overstays its welcome or feels drawn out. Maybe now might be a good time to talk about the enemy himself, the Vigilante. He is unquestionably my favorite Pizza Tower character of all time. His huge cheese slime eyes and mouth allow him to be very expressive, and I honestly get bigger laughs from Vigilante just brooding and trying to be serious than I do from characters with silly expressions by default like Noise and Pizza Head. Obviously no disrespect to either of them though because I love them as well. I adore characters with really wide frowning faces like this. It's also why squash is my favorite plant in Plants vs. Zombies. Vigilante is probably the most morally upstanding member of the main cast as well. He's not here out of a sense of jealousy or anger. He's just a cowboy who is tricked into thinking that Pepino is a bad person. I know there were plans for him to be a playable character at one point, and man, what I wouldn't give for Tour de Pizza to give that another try somewhere in the next two to four years after Noise is finished. Anyways, back to the fight itself. Calzonification may not be the greatest boss theme in the game, but it's still an absolute banger and it really adds a lot of lonesome tension to an already raw encounter between two hombres just shooting it out. To all my JoJo fans out there, this is the true man's world in action. As the duel comes to a close, what started as a Kirby's Adventure reference ends on another one. And thus, the curtain falls on one of the best bosses in all of 2D platformer history. And there you have it. All the Pizza Tower bosses ranked from my least favorite to my favorite. Or at least, all of them for now. When the noise update drops, we might get a new boss or two, so if you want me to give my thoughts on them down the road, then be sure to let me know you enjoyed this content by liking the video and subscribing. It really goes a long way towards helping the channel out. And if you want to watch more of my Pizza Tower rankings right now, I'll leave links to the videos where I rank the normal stages and the title cards in this video's end cards. So be sure to check those out if they interest you. But with that, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.